So earlier this week, I released The Bridge, an AI short film that was created primarily with Google's AI video generator, VO2. I did, of course, promise to do a full production breakdown of this project, going over everything that I learned in the process, how long it took me, and how you could make a film like this yourself, and maybe most importantly, you know, how much did the whole thing cost? All right, check the gate and slap the slate. We're heading in. Kicking off, I did just want to say thank you for the overwhelming response to the short. Uh, we'll do a quick screening of it in just a minute in case you haven't seen it yet. But I do have to say, a lot of people did. We're a few days in now and it's racked up about 384,000 views across you know various social media platforms. Reddit was actually a big part of that, racking up triple K numbers on the AI art subreddit and uh, oddly, the Midjourney subreddit. Overall, reception was very positive. We, I, you know, I did get some hate, that's to be expected, total par for the course, as well as some critiques and commentary on the well, more traditional, technical, and creative sides, uh, some of which were totally valid, some of which, well, you know, everyone's entitled to their opinion. But again, the vast majority of the feedback has been positive, or at least interested and engaged. Obviously, there were a lot of questions as to how this was done, and hopefully I'll be able to answer those questions today. But first, in case you didn't see the bridge or, you know, just to serve as a refresher, uh, let's roll it here. Hold, barbarian. Do I pass or do I take your head? You may pass if you pay the toll. It is a mega fee. I'll give you no coin, ghoul. Coin is not the fee. I require a story. I have no tales to tell. Oh, but you do. Perhaps the story of the axe you carry with such weight. And whose head would it claim next? The axe will take you a master's head. As for its story, it began with the reaping. The ashen tore through my village, and in moments, everything I loved was gone. I saw him there, Malicifer. What I would have given to have killed him there, but I was weak, so I ran. Until lost, I stumbled upon a cabin, and the greatest warrior I have ever known. A lost child found what a legion could not. He trained you then? In the way of the Ordokaitis, Blades first, then the axe. Any fool can flail with the sword, but an axe? That requires power, precision, strategy. He forged me into a weapon, and he sharpened my mind. Every night he would read me the tales from one book, pages torn out of the back. I asked him once, what good is a book with missing pages? And he said, So the story never ends. <sighs> and then the day came that my training was done. A delightful tale, indeed. You may pass, but you shall not find my master within these walls, although he did leave something for you. Pages torn from a book, so you might know how the story ends. So right off the bat, a question that was asked a number of times. Yes, we will find out what is on those pages. I am working on the, you know, part two to this. But jumping into our breakdown, I guess let's start off with pre-production. Uh, first off, no, this script was not written by ChatGPT although it also wasn't written in a traditional final draft script format either. It was almost written on the fly where I would you know, generate a shot and then think, well, what comes next? Currently with that, I was also generating up some concept ideas in mid-journey while simultaneously generating up character concepts. Uh, yeah, there were definitely a lot of these. Now here's where, and I don't wanna say I lost a day because it, it was very useful, but I did call an audible because I considered sidestepping VO and instead using Kling 1.6, uh, in particular, the elements feature, which, uh, you know, we generated all those reference images up. Uh, the elements feature will allow you to upload a, you know, person, a subject, and an item, uh, give it a prompt, and it'll kind of mash it all together. And the initial results, especially the initial generation of our skeleton guy, I mean, that looks really cool. Uh, again, he, that was a concept that I generated up in mid-journey. Um, it works really, really well here. 
Ultimately, though, I was just running into a lot of problems in control and consistency on the cling side. For example, this shot where, you know, our skeleton guy's just following around like a lost puppy dog. Or some problems with the elements feature itself where it would occasionally fuse the two characters together and you'd end up with like a, a zombie barbarian, which is also cool, uh, just not what I was aiming for. And listen, I am not dogging Kling here at all, uh, because when it hits, it hits. It just it just wasn't the right tool for this job. That said, I was very quickly re-inspired to use VO2 after catching Jason Zada's Wu Tang Clan video, which was you know also generated up with VO2. Uh, if you haven't caught that, it is linked down below. Uh, banger song and an amazing video. Moving over to production, I feel like it's almost kind of a necessity at this point to use an LLM uh, to assist with prompting. Early on, and this may surprise some of you, but I, I made the decision to use uh, Google's Gemini as the LLM for this project. In terms of prompt instruction to VO2, I ended up utilizing a tweet by Henry Dabrez, who did the uh, very fantastic VO2 short film Kitsune. I'll have a link to this tweet down below, but yeah, I mean, essentially all I did was, you know, copy pasted this, brought it over to Gemini and said, follow these directions. From here, I was able to take not only our concept images, but, uh, you know, screenshots from our Kling outputs as well. And, you know, just feed them into Gemini and say, you know, make me a VO prompt out of this. At some point in the process, Gemini and I definitely got into a bit of a groove and I just ended up ditching the reference images entirely. I have often said that working this way kind of feels a bit like being a writer, producer, director, working remotely with a film crew in like, let's say Belgium. Uh, and then your point of contact speaks English, but none of the other department heads do. But like with all creative endeavors, you know, somehow it gets done. Uh, so taking those prompts and moving them, of course, over to VO2. Now I am part of the VO2 test group, so the interface may look a little bit different here. If you're interested in joining, uh, best bet is to join the Google Labs Discord as they occasionally drop access over there. In answer to the question, how many videos did you generate for this? Well, the answer is quite a lot. Uh, I'll save the total number towards the end of the video where we are tallying up costs. Now, in terms of the character consistency and overall unified look, uh, that is a VO2 trick hack uh, that I, I think currently is only available on the test site. Although I am hoping, because I don't know if people know about it. So um, this is one of those things where I'm hoping that we can, we can bug Google and get it opened up to everyone. That said, do not be disheartened by the fact that this little hack may not be available to you right now, as I think that anything in this film could easily be accomplished via some trained Laura characters and pretty much any other video generator. Uh, if you don't know about the whole trained Laura thing, I do have a video coming up on that next week. So the interesting trick here is that when VO2 first launched, the only way that you could do image to video was actually via like a text to image to video. So you had to use Google's ImageN3 to generate your image. Now, the running theory is that within that image, uh, ImageN embeds some sort of latent space that VO2 is able to understand. Um, so if you begin your prompt with split scene uh, and then followed by whatever prompt, and you can change locations here if you want to, I will set this to use first frame. Now the end result usually begins with a number of frames just with your initial input image, but then you'll see, yeah, around the four second mark, it'll switch completely to a new location. In this case, I did prompt for a Viking ship. And listen, I wanna point out that it is not always perfect. Uh, this is a generation where we kind of ended up with the video game look. And then in this generation, it decides to just go multiple split screen on me. Uh, it's kind of a cool look well, until she vanishes behind that other layer. But I mean, it's kind of neat, but I mean, I'm not gonna be able to use this for anything. And even then the characters are not exactly the same. They're very close, but you know, clearly uh, this character and this character are again, very similar, but you know, one has her Friday night face on, the other one has her Monday morning face on. Not judging, man, I know a Monday morning face. My biggest takeaway and advice is it's not about consistently spamming to get the perfect generation, but rather uh, this is a output that uh, was not used. You can see here we're sw scene switching quite a bit. Um, so it's just a matter of finding like the little pieces that you can use in terms of audio generation, I ended up utilizing a combination of both Eleven Labs, Voice to Voice, and Hume, which actually we took a look at a few videos back. For our main character, I actually just used one of the uh, like preset stock voices, Charlotte. Um, played around with some of the sliders a little bit, recorded some audio, and generated it up. 
It only took moments for the ashen to raise my village to the ground. And for Toll Master Death, uh, I ended up using the Wise Wizard preset over on Hume. Uh, I told you when we made that video, I, I did like the Wise Wizard voice. Hold, barbarian. So once I had video and audio, I was able to go in and cut together essentially a rough pass uh, before moving on to lip sync, which you guys definitely asked about. So for the lip syncing, I ended up utilizing Hydra, which has just released its character three model, and it's pretty good. Now, I didn't think about it at the time, but Hydra does not accept video inputs. It only accepts image inputs. So, you know, I would have to take a screenshot from my shot and then bring it in as an up upload it as an image, then bring in my audio. Um, you can then actually prompt to, you know, character, direction, emotion, that sort of thing. Um, and then running that all together, you, you do end up with a video. Definitely one of the most impressive outputs that I saw out of Hydra was the side profile shot. That is something that I definitely did not expect to work. So yeah, man, uh, Hedra, great job, guys. Now, as a note, out of the box, Hedra outputs come in at 720, and you'll notice that they're they're a little on the choppy side. So that is something to keep in mind is that it will require uh, some sort of upscaling. I use Topaz uh, Video AI 5. I'm not even on the latest version. Uh, settings I used were just the upscale to full HD. I used the Iris preset. Um, turned up the recovery detail to around 43, uh, and then um, I did do an apply a correction to rolling shutter and jittery motion. Uh, I don't know if rolling shutter necessarily did anything, but I figure it can't hurt. Speaking of upscaling, there was one other trick that I pulled with a few of the shots, uh, notably the one with Malicifer, and look, I know, that name is super on the nose. I liked it. As we can see here, VO2 did a, like, a weird split screen, which explains why uh, that shot in the final film is kind of in that ultra wide, I just ended up cropping this part of it. Now, uh, the shot that I ended up using has a bit of like uh, a Unreal Engine kind of vibe to it. So in order to get around that, I took that shot over to Runway's new restylize feature, uh, where you can download the first frame. Took that frame over to Magnific, uh, and man, that frame got really chewed up. Uh, but Magnific was able to, you know, bring it back to life, and then brought that output back over to Runway to, you know, bring it all together. And all of that brings us over to our, you know, sort of final touches with post-production. Uh, but first, you know, one thing I totally neglected to do when I was putting this film together was make a poster. Thankfully, our friends at ReCraft just happened to be sponsoring today's video, so it's a bit like peanut butter meeting jelly. Now, I have covered ReCraft on the channel in the past, but in case you weren't aware, they are an image generation and editing platform that I think really flies on the design side. We'll have a deeper dive into ReCraft coming up in the future, but for now, let's go design a poster. Obviously for our poster, we are going to want to set this at an aspect ratio of two, three. For our prompt, I'm gonna provide it with kind of an atmospheric look at the bridge, sort of a minimal thing. And here's something interesting that I discovered, is that you can control your color palette up here, or you can bring an image in, such as this screen capture from the film, uh, and we can use that to sample and basically create a color palette based off of that image. And we end up landing on this, which actually matches that kind of the minimalist look that I was looking for. Now, what I think the real strength of ReCraft is, is that it makes it very quick to iterate and explore different design ideas. Now, obviously that is just scratching the surface of what ReCraft can do. Like I said, I'll be back later on with a fuller deep dive into the platform. But in the meantime, if you want to explore on your own, it does have a free tier of 50 free credits a day. There is also a pro promo code listed down below, so definitely don't miss out on that. My thanks to ReCraft for sponsoring today's video. Again, that link is down below and for the snazzy poster. Okay, let's get back to our production breakdown. So moving over to final post-production. Uh, I do edit in Premiere. Please don't judge my timeline. Yes, it is a mess. Yes, I am aware. One trick I did utilize for the title card and for the opening shot was to put a slight Gaussian blur um, around this area. I really do feel that that is something uh, that you guys should probably take a look at at some point or another. Uh, it just kind of gives it that like Vaseline on the lens kind of look. Uh, but I, I really think with like AI video, it, it really does help like kind of smooth out some of the imperfections. And finally, in terms of our death guy's voice, uh, here's how it sounds isolated. Coin is not the fee. I require a story. So the audio chain on this is just a pitch shifter. Uh, it's the stock 
um, premiere one set to the preset Deathly Ill to the stock surround reverb preset uh, somewhere not here. Who gets to name these Adobe? Can I get that job? And the one that really kind of brings it all together uh, is that I then run it through Guitar Rig 6, a guitar amp uh, emulator uh, via a compressor tube echo based off of the Roland Space Echo uh, and then a reflector, which kind of gives it, you know, sort of that swirly ambience thing. And from there we hit file export and Bob's your uncle. Now, as I always say on the channel, is it perfect? No, it is not. Plenty of people in the comments were happy to point out all of the little inconsistencies. Obviously, uh, the axe being probably the biggest. I mean, this is just kind of where we are with the technology. Um, sometimes you just have to let things slide. That said, I mean, as I thought about it, I probably could, you know, hire a very talented 3D artist and a VFX compositor and have them, you know, actually manually put in axes to uh, all of the shots. But again, I did not have the time nor the budget for that. I'll say the one that bugged me that nobody seemed to catch was the fact that in this shot, uh, the death guy seems to be wearing armor. Um, yeah, just all of which is to say, yes, I am aware of every single little inconsistency and hiccup in these two minutes. And that brings us to cost. Uh, total amount of generations for this project was uh, 375 clips, 37 shots in the final film. So, uh, you know, a shooting ratio of 10 to one, which actually isn't that bad. It's actually kind of in line with a professional shoot. Hard costs, I'll include Mid Journey at $30 a month. That one is optional. Uh, the Gemini LLM, which is free. 11 Labs for voice at $22 a month and Hume, which uh, actually has a very generous free tier. So uh, that is $0. I did forget to mention earlier that I utilize Udio for the music. Um, that would be an additional $10. Hedra at Lip Sync for an additional $10. Um, I'm gonna add in Premiere at $60 a month, even though uh, you know you could use DaVinci uh, Resolve, for example, and that would be free. Uh, CapCut, I think is free as well. Runway at $30 a month for a handful of those uh, video restyles uh, and Magnific at $40 a month for, once again, same thing. Uh, here's where our big cost comes in uh, is that the VO2 API is uh, 50 cents a second. Yes, that thing is no joke right now. Uh, so 375 shots at eight seconds at 50 cents a second basically comes out to $1,500. So our total cost comes out to $1,702, which yes, does sound like a lot. And to note, I'm actually not factoring in my own time. Uh, I would say probably around 32 hours, plus an additional eight hours where I went down that cling rabbit hole and the mid journey rabbit hole. Um, so yeah, for a total of 40 hours. But I will say that even at like my highest, most exorbitant rate, if you break things down into a traditional filmmaking pipeline, the budgets are much higher. Running through some rough costs with Gemini since, you know, it, it took me through this whole project. Um, as a full-scale Hollywood production, like Lord of the Rings style, uh, even at 2 minutes and 11 seconds, uh, given everything that we would need to pull this off, you'd be looking at a rough estimated budget of $3 million to uh, $10 million. I mean, a really great line producer probably could get it down a little bit lower than that, but I mean, you've still got locations, actors, crew, the whole nine. I mean, that sounds pretty on point for me. Now on the indie film or TV budget side, at two minutes and 11 seconds, I, I kind of almost consider it at the music video level, uh, our rough estimated budget comes out to about 75,000 to half a million. Uh, it's a pretty wide range, I'll give you that. But um, yeah, I mean, that tracks in my opinion. Finally, for a 3D animated version of this, uh, you know, via a professional studio, uh, the rough estimated budget on this is $200,000 to 2 million. Again, a pretty wide margin, but still, when you think about those numbers, our $1,700 does not seem like that much. Now, does this short match the same, you know, level of quality that say like the production team of Game of Thrones would produce? No, of course it doesn't. But that is also a massive team of people. And I am one guy uh, that put this together in, you know, roughly a week's time. Ultimately, if you're interested in doing this, you, you really don't need to go the VO2 route. There are plenty of other generators that will do a, you know, a really solid job. Ultimately, is it going to cost you some money? Yeah, it's going to cost you some money. But if you have a story that you've always wanted to tell, well, now is the time to do it. Utilize these tools while we are all still experimenting with them. Uh, and in my opinion, stop making trailers. Um, again, I've shown you everything that you needed in this video. Make scenes, make movies. For the first two years of this channel, the resounding comment was, it's just not there yet. That comment doesn't appear anymore. It's there. Go make something.
In the meantime, I will, of course, be here keeping up to date on the latest and greatest in AI video and passing that information on to you. But in the background, I will be working on part two of The Bridge. I thank you for watching. My name is Tim.